We're on. Uh, we're on. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it, it's it's not it's it's not showing up. Okay. What's up? It's your boy Mayhem Matthew. Today we are going to be doing uh, the Vanderbilt schedule preview for 2023. Um, I know Vanderbilt uh, is really not that great of a team, but they are in the SEC. And so we're going to do this uh, football schedule preview. Um, you know, I have special guest Ballard. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you. Uh, first off, before we did this, we actually collaborated on a mock draft um, video that we'll have premiering tomorrow for you guys or premiering on Monday. I don't know when Mayhem plans to upload this video, but uh, if you haven't seen it, go to my channel and check out the mock draft official uh, for BSF. So I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, for sure. And disclaimer, I'm not really NFL guy. I think I said that a couple times in that uh, video, but – um, I am a college football guy, so with that being said, uh, tell me who, uh, you know, Clark, Clark Clark Lee had them boys looking all right last year. They won five games, upsetting Florida and Kentucky, two SEC wins last year. So they're going into this year with a lot of momentum. Um, tell me who they lose and who th – we're going to start on offense. Tell me – who they lose, and who returns to the Vanderbilt Commodores. Yeah, so they actually return a lot. Um, I know – I think they return kicker Joseph Bulovus. I, I say that because he used to be at Alabama. Um, they had a lot of seniors. They had some fifth-year seniors like Gavin uh, Schoenwald. Uh, they had Elijah McAllister on the defensive line. Um, Justice, uh, I'm sorry, Justin Harris is a safety senior, six foot one, 200 pounds. Um, looking at, um, this year, uh, for 2023, 2024, um, it looks like guys like Harris that I just mentioned is gone. Um, it looks like, um, you know, they bring back Davion Davis, who's a grad. Uh, Ken Seals at quarterback. Um, A.J. Swan at quarterback. He comes back. Um, they don't really lose a lot. They actually bring a lot back um, more so. So a lot of experience going down in Vanderbilt, Tennessee. All right. Uh, what about the defense? Uh, who leaves and who comes back there? <laughs> Yeah, so they have a senior in Michael Spencer who's coming back. They have a linebacker in Ethan Barr coming back. Um, I mean, I could go down the list. Uh, they bring back a kicker. I know that special teams. Uh, they bring back a grad it, that's a defensive end or linebacker, um, DJ Cosmo uh, or DeCosmo. Um, I misread his name. Aeneas um, is his first name. Um, so many different guys, BJ Anderson, Jalen Mahoney, um, who's a defensive back graduate. Uh, he's from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, no. they got a couple no. different Alabama guys too. Uh, they have so many, uh, guys and so much experience that they bring back to the table on defense this year. So I think if you're a Vanderbilt fan, you got to feel happy to at least have some experience back. Right. Uh, Rock Hill's not too far from me, about a 30 minute drive. So, shout out to that guy uh, that's out of Rock Hill in that. So, uh, let's take a dive into their 2023 schedule. Last year, they started with Hawaii. This year, they also start with Hawaii. They uh, absolutely blew the doors off of this Hawaii team. But you do have to remember something about Hawaii from last year. 
I believe their head coach uh, right before the season start or in the middle of the season just up and left. So they had a scramble for a new head coach. So I would believe that Hawaii gets a little bit better. Do I think it's going to be better enough to beat Vanderbilt? I'm not sure, but um, 63 to 10, um, that's a uh, that, that's just uh, a blowout there. But um, what do you think about this? Uh, they play at home uh, against Hawaii. What do you think? I think they'll probably win that game. They kind of beat them last year and, um, you know, took care of business. So I, here's the thing about Vanderbilt is I expect them to be very much improved compared to last year. Um, lose a couple guys, but bring a lot back. Like I mentioned, um, I think they should handle business at home to start the season. They get their first two games at home. Uh, obviously I know you want to stick with Hawaii to start the season. I think Vanderbilt is that t- team no matter who's going to play as long as it's not a tier one or two team um you know uh they should be good they went to honolulu in week zero last season beat the brakes off of them 63 to 10 uh i expect them to kind of do the same thing here for sure and then they play alabama a&m that is ballard's favorite team what you think about it it's not my favorite team, but I do pull for the in-state teams. <laughs> um, I'm pulling for a- Alabama A&M just because they're an in-state team. But, again, another team that Vanderbilt should probably beat um, and be better than. Um, Alabama a and has got a pretty good program, pretty good football program. Are they good enough for the SEC? I don't think so. So this should be another win for uh, Vanderbilt. Yeah, I totally agree there. Um, Then they go on the road to Wake Forest. Last year, Vanderbilt kept up with them probably for like a quarter and a half there. And then Wake Forest started to pull away and kind of beat the brakes off of Vanderbilt. I expect much of the same here. It's at Wake Forest, and I'm not sure if uh, Vanderbilt has the guys to hang on to beat Wake Forest. What do you think? I mean, you're talking about the SEC versus the AC and Wake Forest. Uh, I think for the AC title a couple of years. So I think in the probably COVID season or 2021 or something like that. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think Wake Forest should be a good team. Um, this could be, this could be a trap. Uh, for Wake Forest. This could be that Wake Forest loses is supposed to win. They are supposed to win uh, this year, and honestly, I think that's what's going to happen. But Vanderbilt could surprise us. Right. And then they go uh, – they stay on the road to face UNLV. Um, and I think Vanderbilt takes care of business – um, they have back-to-back road games, but that should not scare the Vanderbilt Commodores as they face a low-tier team in UNLV. What, what's your thoughts? Uh, fully with what you just said, you know they have back-to-back road games, but it shouldn't it shouldn't waver them. Um, it could be tough. Uh, they could drop both of those road games. They could go two and zero. Oh, they could go one and one. I think they go one and one. I think they drop Wake Forest, but I think they go to UNLV, and I think that they bounce back on the road. Right. And then they they go home to face Kentucky last year at Kentucky at Kroger Field. They upset them. I do believe Kentucky – listen, I understand we can't make excuses for Kentucky. They should have been able to beat Vanderbilt. But the problem with teams like Kentucky is they have really good starters, but they don't have depth. So if they lose a quarterback, if they lose a suspended uh, running back, if they lose a couple of receivers, um, well, your whole team's gone, right? Uh, at least your offense. And um, I think Kentucky, they, they have, they have a, a new quarterback from the ACC in Devin Leary. He's a, a great talent. 
Uh, I do think Kentucky's offense and defense line is uh, going to be very good. I do think, um, you know, they, they have a couple of receivers that uh, I like there. And they also have uh, – Kentucky also uh, has uh, Vanderbilt's running back. So um, that, that'll that be a matchup to see. I think Kentucky's going to be just a little bit too much. For this Vanderbilt team, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, Kentucky is really good but they also can be really bad. You never know what you're going to get out of them during the season. It's the SEC opener. It's at home for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's supposed to take a couple steps forward this year. Um, did they lose? Remind me again. They they actually beat Kentucky late, late in the season last year. They beat Florida, too. I think this is a team that could have some momentum. Um, and I'm going to say they beat Kentucky this year. For sure. Then they uh, stay at home to face Missouri uh, and the Tigers there. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I need to take a deeper look into Missouri, but uh, a lot of people are thinking Missouri might even be last in the SEC East. Um, I'm not sure if I believe that or, or not, but um, Vanderbilt, this is probably a toss-up game. I would say a 50-50 game. Uh, they have them at home, and if the people are right that say Missouri is just going to be the bottom of the barrel, this should be a very good game for for Vanderbilt. I think so, too. I think that you they could be right about Missouri being at the bottom of the barrel uh, for the SEC East this year. Uh, really don't know for sure, um, but – you never know until you see it. Um, I have more questions about Missouri than I do Vanderbilt. Um, this is a home game for Vanderbilt, too. Back-to-back uh, -back home games. Um, I think they win at least one of them. I think I'll give it to, to Vanderbilt to beat Missouri. Right, for sure. And then they go on the road at Florida. I know, um, you know, cue the uh, Florida jokes here, you know. Um, Florida's just going to be absolutely terrible. But Florida does uh, play them at home. Uh, and with that being said, you know, it's always tough playing at the Swamp, uh, no matter if Florida's terrible or if they're a good team. So um, it's going to be very hard for Vanderbilt to uh, win this game, especially, you know, Florida lost to Vanderbilt last year, uh, and that was a terrible – disappointing loss and if billy napier wants to keep his job this is one game he has to win and i think he knows that in in the back of his brain so uh i'm gonna go ahead and say vanderbilt doesn't win this game it's kind of a coin flip for me because i think florida is going to be terrible this year but i think florida i like if you have to ask me by october uh which this game's october 7th uh, someone's going to have more stuff figured out than the other team. I think Florida has more stuff figured out than Vanderbilt at this point in the season, um, and it is in the swamp, so I'm going to have to give it to Florida. For sure. And then they go home to face my Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia's going to beat the brakes off of them. Uh, not too worried about this game. It's just a total mismatch there, so uh, give me Georgia by 50. What you thinking? Same thing. I mean, don't even have to comment on it. Georgia's elite, uh, better than Vanderbilt in many ways, and um, I, it doesn't matter where this game is played. Georgia by fifty, like you just said. Right, and then they take their bye week. You know, after getting humiliated by Georgia, they take a bye week to uh, recover from the beatdown. But then they got to go at Ole Miss uh, to take another beatdown from them as well. What you think? I know we talked about Jackson Dart on the Touchdown Tuesday show. I'm pretty high on him this year, high on Ole Miss and what they can do. I think Vanderbilt uh, lays an egg, takes a loss here, and I think it's going to be bad too. I think Ole Miss is not only going to run around and score like they want to. I mean, they're going to pull away in the second half big time, even if Vanderbilt makes it even a little bit competitive. Right. So 
Uh, their bye week is not really going to work for their favor. So uh, going to have to take another loss there. But anyways, they go back home to face the Auburn Tigers. To me, Auburn is a question mark. I'm going to be honest. Uh, you never know what to expect from Auburn. Uh, I, they're, they're very questionable at the quarterback position. Um, they're put, they're questionable, uh, on, on the defense and offensive lines, but I'm, I've seen some terrible Auburn teams make a really good run. Um, I do think Auburn's going to be a little bit too much for this Vanderbilt team. So give me Auburn to win. Yeah, I think Auburn's going to be one of those teams that I think gets it figured out quickly with the new head coach and Hugh Freeze. Um, I'm not saying they're going to contend for the West. I'm not saying national title implications. But I think they'll have some stuff figured out this season that Brian Harson couldn't figure out. I think that they'll figure out the quarterback situation. They'll get the defense. They'll have a high-flying offense. And I think by November – I mean, they should be able to go on the road and beat Vanderbilt without any problems at all. Right. And then they, uh, then Vanderbilt goes on the road to face South Carolina. And, um, well, if this is a night game, sorry, Vanderbilt, you're losing by 50. Um, maybe if it's a day game, a noon game, South Carolina will only beat you by 30. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very high on South Carolina this year. And that is very rare that Mayhem Matthew says that because a lot of years I'm not really high on South Carolina. So um, I'm expecting South Carolina to do uh, a really good this season. And uh, Vanderbilt has no chance in this game. Same here. I, I fully agree. I think South Carolina returns too much talent. I think they got to take a step forward. And I think part of that is – beating teams like Vanderbilt. So. Right. And then uh, they take their uh, bye week to get ready for the Tennessee Volunteers. It's going to be at Tennessee. Um, I don't care if Tennessee loses their best wide receiver, their, their best quarterback. Um, I don't care if they lose half their defense. Tennessee is not losing this game, okay? Um, yeah. Tennessee is just – way more powerful than Vanderbilt. Uh, so give me Tennessee to win this. I know this is not a, a prediction video. This is a preview, but I'm going to go ahead and give you the preview uh, that Tennessee's uh, winning this game. That's, you know, kind of the preview I'm given because um, there's not really much talk about Vanderbilt. They're not going to be that good. Uh, they might be able to get one or two SEC wins and, like a Kentucky, Mizzou, or or even a, a a Florida team, if they can come out with one, maybe two of them wins, um, they'll be they'll be they'll be lucky. They'll be grateful, um, and they they might win some of their non-con games. But um, uh, what do you think about Tennessee? They should be. Uh, I mean, I expect them to lose some key pieces and take a step back, but they should still be good enough to beat Vanderbilt at home and. Uh, I think this is where Vanderbilt kind of gets off on the wrong foot to start the season. Actually, they start out okay, uh, but I think the schedule gets tougher as it goes, and you know they're just not able to pick up all the pieces. So I got Tennessee winning the last game of the year. Yeah, I think the bottom half of their schedule does not fare well. Uh, you know, like I stated before, they go at Florida, face Georgia, at Ole Miss, face Auburn at South Carolina and at Tennessee, that is just a – if you're Vanderbilt, you have to be worried about that. the last six games on your schedule. I, I understand you beat Florida last year, but you have to go to the Swamp and do that same exact thing for a second year in a row, and uh, it's just not going to happen. So I think if you're going to win games, you're going to have to win your first half uh, of the season. If you want to go bowling, you have to win your – you have to be on a really hot streak in the first six games because your last six games is going to be very tough. So um, let's do a ceiling. Uh, what is the most wins that you see this Vanderbilt team uh, winning? Look at their schedule again. Um, 
I'm going to say maybe f- four or five. I think it depends on, like, the Kentucky and Auburn games. But I- I'm going to say I'll-, I'll give them five at most. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think five at maximum. And, and in order for them to have five, uh, you know, they're going to beat Hawaii, beat Alabama A&M, beat UNLV. That's three. They would have to have a two-win season in the SEC again. That would come from uh, either Kentucky, Missouri, or Florida. Um, I guess at most five wins. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, give me bottom of the barrel there. Three wins because I think they could – I think they could definitely get Hawaii, Alabama, A and M, and I think they could get UNLV. The rest of the games, I think, will be too tough if if they're at their lowest. <laughs> yeah, I, I would totally agree with you. Uh, you know, you know, we're talking about an SEC team. You know, you, this is kind of ironic and funny here. Um, we're talking about an SEC team that's not very good and. When we're talking about a floor for a team, you know, normally in these cases you would say, well, you know, they might be eligible for like a floor, right? But we're 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 talking about Vanderbilt here that our floor is could be one win, right? I mean, Hawaii, uh, you know, like I said before, Hawaii, you have to understand Hawaii's head coach quit right before the season, so they had to scramble to find a head coach. And uh, maybe Hawaii upsets them. So we're thinking like two wins, Alabama and AM and UNLV. You got to go on the road to UNLV. So you might lose that game, which I don't think they will. But I'm just saying that their floor could be one win in Alabama AM. and um, And that's just horrible. Um, but I am going to say the floor here is three wins. Uh, I'm okay. going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you, but. You know, there is a case to be made that the floor could be only one win, and that's very sad for a SEC team uh, in Vanderbilt. But I do think uh, Clark Lee got them boys looking good uh, last year, but uh, this is a brand-new year, and I think they're going to go back to regular old Vandy. Um, So uh, I really appreciate you, Ballard. Uh, Tell everybody where to find you. Yeah, so you can find me on YouTube, Ballard Sports Media. We're working our way to a thousand subscribers. We are. I'd have to look at it. Um, actually, I got it pulled up here. We're at nine thirty-seven, so we're about sixty-three away. We're slowly getting there each and every day. I'll keep putting out content if you guys keep showing up. Yeah, for sure. So make sure to go subscribe to Ballard Sports Media. Um, this is Christian Ballard. So shout out to him. Um, if you like this content, smash the thumbs up. And if you really like this content, hit the subscribe button.